Okay, okay, okay. Welcome back to the Score on Black Man podcast. This is a new series going on. I told you we're going to be doing big things. This is a new series. It's called Controversial and Deep Biblical Breakdowns. And before um, we get into this series, I'm going to let you know a little something about the series. This is going to be an open platform for all the top scholars in the Hebrew Israelite community. So if you're a top scholar, you have something controversial or a deep biblical doctrine or breakdown, and you really know your shit, you know, biblically, historically, and archaeologically, bring forth to me, and I'll see why I let you on. Um, today's show is going to be, you know, it's the first, you know, show of this uh, new series here sponsored by the Scorn Black Man Podcast. Uh, I have the good brother Yisrael on. Uh, he's going to be doing a show today. And uh, before I give y'all the topic, uh, I'm going to let the brother introduce himself and uh, just tell y'all kind of how long he's been in the truth. Go ahead, brother. Good your Yisrael. Shalom. Okay. Um, shalom, brothers and everyone who's listening. Um, my name is Yisrael. Um, that's Y-I-S-R-A-Y-L, not E-L, but Y-L. And um, I would just like to share with you some of the things that I've learned during my travels. Um, with the last 20 years, I've been incarcerated. You know, I've just been out recently. So a lot of things that I've, I, I will present, you know, it was from independent studies. But I base all of my findings and I make sure that it's according to the law and the prophets. I don't have a certain indoctrination or a, or certain ideologies that I come from. I come from the perspective of the law and the prophets. If it cannot be consented in the law or confirmed throughout the prophets, you know, if there's, if there's any contradictions, then I know that it, we all know that the law has, you know, or the scriptures being tampered with, especially when you see contradictions, because the word of the most high, it should not contradict. So if it's contradicts, that means that an indoctrination has been put in. But when you stand on the grounds of the law and of the prophets, with your understanding, that is the comprehension of the knowledge that you have accumulated over your time to study, when you have gathered all your information and you use it and apply the law and the prophets with it, especially dealing with the Hebrew script scriptures, you know, not just only the King James version of the Bible, any Hebrew scriptures, because I know that the King James version of the Bible is a Protestant Bible. And before then, you know, in the Roman Catholic Bible, you have extra biblical books. And even after that, you have more books. And these books are not so much hidden. They are there, but a lot of us don't accept them because we have never been taught to accept them. We have been indoctrinated to accept this. And we accepted it that way. But today, what I would like to do, I would like to come from a perspective of masonry and the law and the prophets. Because from my understanding and from my, and from my studies, I know that in order to be a Mason, and even Masons know this, you must believe in the Bible because from the 33rd degree, the symbolism of, of the Holy Bible is truth. The Holy Bible is, emblematic of, um, is symbolic of truth. And you have the compass in the square. The Holy Bible of the three building tools of masonry, this is the great light. You have three great lights of masonry. You have the Holy Bible. You have the compass in the square. Well, the Holy Bible is the great light. And it's symbolic, of, it's symbolic of truth. And it's emblematic of divine truth. We know the pillar of wisdom that governs the large. His foundation is truth and justice. What is the real logic of your profession? The search for truth. If the, if the Bible is symbolic of truth, then our real profession is to search for this truth. And we know that it's not so much as encoded in here, but the Hebrew scriptures has been translated so much, we have to revert back from this English language 
to the Hebrew. And that's why I would advise, I would advise brothers, you know, to um, um, acquire you if you don't have one, a Strong's um, um, Exhaustive Concordance, Hebrew, Arabic, Greek, Exhaustive Concordance, or I would prefer the Strong's Complete Dictionary, the Complete Dictionary Bible Words. Yes, but I would prefer an older version because they have been watered down. I actually, my, my first one was a 1996 copyright. And I've noticed over the years that it has been watered down and words have been taken out. But what I would do, I, I will show you, according to the Bible and according to the, to the laws that govern masonry, how it all blends in together. And what I first want to come with, with Genesis chapter 2. And if, if there are masons out there, then you will identify with everything that I speak. And it will be all translated, but I guarantee you that it will all identify with the law of the prophets because what I tend to do, I will, I will give you a basic foundation. And then I will give you a history. And it's according to, it's according to the knowledge that I accumulated, but it's all based in the law of the prophets because I would not present it if it did not. So first and foremost, I would just like to start, you know, with a, with a few basic um, Hold on scripture. Hold on yes, sir. Second, uh, let me go ahead and give them um, the um, title, the introduction. The name yes. of this show is called The Fallen Angels, The Watchers, and Anunnaki. Who were they and their mission? And this is going to be uh, presented by Brother Yisrael. He's going to give you the knowledge that he's accumulated. It's an open platform, like I said, for all of the uh he for all the top Hebrew scholars uh in our community, our people. So the top scholars in the Hebrew Israelite community, if you have a deep, a controversial and deep biblical breakdown or doctrine, you're welcome to come on this show. If you're a top scholar, this brother he's gonna do his thing, you're gonna see his face a lot. And hey, it's this is for Israel to discuss, to take in, uh, you know, and give you two cents. You know, is what the brother gonna bring out today? Is he correct? I mean, he's not. But give the brother a listening ear. He he have a lot of knowledge. He's gonna bring out. So, brother, I'm gonna pass it to you. Um, do your presentation, and I'm just gonna step back and let you do your thing, man. Okay, thank you, brother. Okay, first of all, I would like to start off with the scripture in the book of Saint John, chapter seven, verse sixteen through seventeen. It is written, Yahshua answered them and said. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any husbandman will perform his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yah or whether I speak of myself. Now concerning the will of Yah and the acknowledging of the same in the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, it is written. And now, Israel, what do Yah thy sovereign require of you but to revere Yah thy sovereign and to behave self according to all his course of life and to love him and to serve Yah thy sovereign with all thy understanding and with all thy will to keep the law of Yah and his commandments which I command you this day for thy good. Now, in the book of Isaiah, before I continue on out, I'll include this scripture. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 9 through 10, it is written, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are doing good by reason of being firm and withdrawn from insolence. For the ordinance must be according to the precept which was commanded in the law to open the census of the flower to live according to the pledge he took up and therein remain. So I'm going to enlighten you. I will enlighten the brothers listening to the pledge that the brothers took up and therein remain. Genesis chapter 2. It's basically dealing with the rites of passage of masonry. And it's giving you 
the ground laws of what is required before an initiate, which is a man of low degree, was to be brought into this order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, king of righteousness. We understand in the books of the law, Isaiah and, and, and Jeremiah, that it was Yah who was the king of righteousness. And those of his order were his princes. And, and it's a family of nobilities, a nobility. And from its earliest beginning, its, in, its inception was in Genesis chapter one. We understand that these people, these Hebrew people with these ancient families, they had a trade that was building. And you will find it throughout all the Bible, from Noah and the building of the ark to the building of the city and the great tower at Babel. You will see it with the Hebrew slavery in Egypt building. You will see it with David gathering the substance and giving Solomon the blueprints to the temple and Solomon overseeing the construction of the temple. And we always dealt with masons and carpentry. Always. It was our trade. But this is Genesis chapter 2. In like manner, the families of the husbandry were set up and likewise the service of them. And on the charge by a note, the luminary in no wise ceased his service wherewith he entered into covenant. And he kept the Sabbath on the seventh day from all his labor, wherein he had a manner of work. And Yah blessed the seventh day and sanctified it according to that in which he had established by all his command, which the sovereign dispatched and put in execution. This is a history of the families and of the husbandry when they were selected in the day that Yah and every wise established the husbandmen and the builders and the worthy laid unto charge herein show self pure before he was with the husbandry and him that was brought forth which showed himself pure within the same advanced for to act instantly y'all had never ascribed to the teachers in the husbandry and that was not a hypocrite to transgress the setup and that came forth the gathering from among the husbandmen and taught complete knowledge for the families and the chief sovereign brought forth the worthy of the families of the husbandry and, the, and kindled within his worthy the divine inspiration for the soul. And the chief sovereign planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he governed the worthy whom he had brought forth. And from the husbandry, an industrious master builder gathered together every carpenter that had inclined to knowledge and fit to lead. The carpenter, that, actually, that continually excelled in the midst of the garden and the carpenter that had understanding of good and evil. And the assembled departed from Eden to water the garden. And from there, and from there out, they were divided and pertained to four companies. The character of the first is to act proudly. These are they which turn away any husbandman that makes supplication. This man becomes cut off. But the prayer of the same husbandry are upright. None can divide and shame the circumspect. And the character of the second assembly is Gihon. The same were they that led the undefiled husband that discerned clearly. The mark of the third assembly is Hedekel. These are they which turn aside the pupil before he prosper. And the fourth assembly altogether are fruitful. And the chief sovereign raised the worthy and received him into the garden of Eden to govern it and to maintain it. And the chief sovereign taught the husband the commandment of no carpenter of the garden, you mess without a cause accuse. Moreover, the carpenter that teach of good and evil, you shall not profane self for the same. For concerning the enlightened that you consume therein, you shall surely die. And the chief sovereign said, it is not profitable that the man of low degree should be idle. I will assign him an accomplished builder to him. 
And from the husbandry, the chief sovereign brought forth every man that showed himself pure. And the husband examined, examined, examined of the accepted and brought them to the man of low degree to see how they would admonish him. And every man of low degree consented, the chief man revived the man. The same was appointed therein. And the man of low degree attained the honor to join the teachers and therefore examined such a one accepted and to consent to restore the life such an one chosen. But for the hypocrite that was not presented or an ordained builder to meet him or to him. And the chief sovereign caused a surging mass of water to cast into a dead sleep both the pure and accepted of the men of low degree. And he slept and he took one of his chambers and he closed up the body in there. And the chamber which the chief sovereign had prepared because of the worthy raised up the same a husbandman and presented him to the kindred. And the person swore, this is now the life which I bind fast and the kindred wherein I remain. He shall be ordained a husbandman because he was raised up from among the men of low degree. Wherefore shall a husbandman join his kindred and his patrimony and shall abide fast with his husbandmen, and they shall be consecrated to preach tidings. And they were also prudent, the husbandmen and his master, and were not confounded. Now, there have been a lot of speculation about Genesis chapter two and a lot of people's doctrine has been based on the story of Adam and Eve and man taking a real from woman. It has nothing to do with that. This is talking about the rites of passage to masonry. And I've never been initiated into the rites of masonry. I've been incarcerated. I've just been out a little more over the seven months. I've been incarcerated the last 20 years and I've been translated for 12 of them. And I have translated many articles and many pieces and it all applied to masonry. And what I discovered in the Bible was that the history of masonry has, it has a beautiful beginning, but it was infiltrated and it was tainted and it was corrupted. And this is, and this happened with the fallen angels. A lot of people refer to these beings as the Anunnaki or aliens. No, these are simply the watchers, these rebel stewards who trespassed on earth. You will find their stories in the Bible. You will find it in Genesis. You will find it in Genesis chapter 11. As a matter of fact, the Tower of Babel story, the word of the Lord can also be translated as angels in Hebrew. So it was the angels that came down. And I will share this information with you. As a matter of fact, I'll get started. And I will start from the knowledge that I have. And it begins in the book that's called The Legend of the Jews. And it gives you the story of, of creation. And the story of creation that I will begin with, with the angels and the creation of man. And the third creation on the second day was the angel companies, both the ministering angels and the angels that blessed Yah. The reason they had not been called to exist on the first day was unless the patrimony believed that the angels assisted Yah in the creations of the heavens and the dry land. And the angels that are fashioned, and the, the angels that are fashioned from fire have forms that blaze, but only so long as they remain in the firmament. And when they descend to earth, they, they to serve a witness of Yah here below, either they are transformed into a whirlwind or they assume the guise of mankind. There are 10 ranks or degrees among the angels. The most exalted in rank are those surrounding the judgment seat on all sides. To the right, to the left, in front and behind, under the leadership of the chief angels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. All the celestial beings praise Yah with the words, Yah, the sacred, the sanctified one, is the sovereign of the sacred courts. But the anointed ones take presence of the angels herein. They may not begin their song of praise until the earthly beings have brought their homage to Yah. Especially Israel is preferred by the angels. When they, when they encircle the divine judgment seat in the form of burning mountains and glittering hills and attempt to raise their voices in adoration for the creator, Yah, 
silences them with the words. Keep quiet until I have heard the proclamation, prayers, thanksgiving, and sweet melodies of Israel according to the ministering angels and all other celestial companies wait until the last tone of Israel's doxologies, risen aloft from the earth have ceased off, and they proclaim with loud proclamation, Yah, the sacred, the sanctified one, is the sovereign of the sacred courts. Now, Yah, in his wisdom, Having resolved to create mankind, he asked counsel of all around him before he proceeded to execute his purpose. An example to the anointed one, be he never so honorable and distinguished not to disdain the advice of the humble and depressed. For y'all called upon the firmament and the dry land, then upon all things, other things he had created, and last upon the angels. The angels were not of all one opinion. The angels love, the angel of love favored through creation of mankind because they would be affectionate and well favored. But the angel of truth opposed him because they would be full of, hypo of hypocrisy. And the angel of justice favored him because he would practice that which is altogether just. The angel of peace opposed him because he would be quarrelsome. To invalidate his protest, Yah cast the angel of truth down from heaven to earth. And when the others cried out by reason of such contemptuous treatment of their companion, he said, truth will in the end return to the tablets. The objections of the angels would have been much stronger had they known the whole truth about mankind. Yah had told them only about the pious and had concealed from them they that would be reprobates among mankind. And yet, though they knew but half the truth, the angels were never less prompted to cry out, what is mankind that you are mindful of him and the anointed one of the patrimony that you care for him? Y'all replied, the pure of mind and the refreshed of the West, who were, who were they created for? Of what avail a larder full of appetizing, savory meats, but no guests to enjoy them? And the angels could not but exclaim, O Yah, our sovereign, how excellent is thy name in the entire earth. Put in execution as is pleasing for thy humble. And not a few of the angels, their opposition bore fatal consequences. When Yah summoned the company under the chief angel, Micaiah, and asked their opinion, of the creation of mankind, they answered scornfully, what is mankind that you are mindful of him and the anointed one of the patrimony that you care for him? Yah thereupon sent out without fail his outbursts of anger to seize and all were become extinguished by a fire except for their chief angel, chief angel, Michael. Digressing here for a minute, we know that the angels were made in the forms of blazing hills and blazing mountains and glittering hills. When Yah extinguished these angels, they became smoke, as in a genie or a jinn. You know this if you are Islam or you are Mason or if you are Mason and you follow the Islam, Islamic belief. We know that jinn were made of smoke, a smokeless, they were made of a of a of a smoke of fireless smoke. And to continue on, the same fate befell the company under the leader, leadership of the chief angel Gabriel. He alone of all was saved from the corruption. The third company consulted was commanded by the chief angel Lavia. Understanding of the horrible fate seeing his predecessors, he warned his company. You have seen what misfortune overtook the angels who said, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? Let us have a care not to do likewise unless we suffer the same dire punishment. For y'all will not refrain, refrain from doing in the end what he has planned. Therefore, it is advisable for us to yield to his wishes. In like manner warned, the angel spoke, sovereign of the worlds, it is well that you have thought of creating mankind. Do you create him according to thy will? And as for us, we will be his attendants, his attendants and his ministers and reveal to him not even our secrets. 
Thereupon, Yah changed Labiel's name to Raphael, the rescuer, because his company of angels had been rescued by his sage advice. He was appointed the angel of healing, who has in his safekeeping all the celestial remedies, the types of medical remedies used on earth. Now, we will now, excuse me, one moment. Now, I would like to show you this same story in the books of the prophets, starting with the books of Enoch. These rebel angels, after they, after they were extinguished, they went furthermore and they interfered with mankind. This was at the building at the Tower of Babel. Understand, Genesis chapter 1 through Genesis is chapter 11. It gives you in somewhat a chronological order, but it actually jumps around to different things that was happening at this time. But in the book of Enoch, chapter 7, verse 1 through 11, it is written. It happened after the builders of the patrimony had excelled in those days, that kindred were raised to them, elegant and well favored. And when the angels, the stewards of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves husbandmen from the progeny of the kindred, and let us beget builders. Then their leader, Sam Yaza, said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise, and that I alone shall suffer for so grievous a crime. But they answered him and said, We all swear and bind ourselves by mutual execrations that we will not change our intention but execute our projected understanding. Then they all swore together and bound themselves by mutual execrations. Their whole number was 200 who descended upon Artis, which is the top of Mount, Mount Armour. That mountain, therefore, was called Armour because they had sworn upon it and bind themselves by mutual execrations. These are their names of their chiefs, Semyaza, who was their leader, your Rakbamariel, Akbiel, Tamiel, Ramuel, Danel, Askiel, Sarkarniel, Asael, Amaris, Bartal, Anan, Zawibi, Samzavia, Ertael, Terel, Yamyael, Arzael. These were the prefects of the 200 angels, and the remainder were all with them. Then they took husbands, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach and with whom they cohabited, teaching sorcery, incantations, and the divining of roots and trees. And the husband and progenitor raised, raised up tyrants, not giants, have always taught. The, he, the word giants is actually Hebrew word 5,303, and it means tyrants, not giants. Nimrod was a tyrant. We will get to him later. Enoch chapter 8, verse 1, it is written. Moreover, Asael taught husbandmen to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, the fabrication of mirrors also, to observe therefore an enemy and devastation. Witchcraft. Some use bowls of water, if you've ever seen in the movies, but mirrors a lot. The beautifying of the body's outward appearance, the use of stone of every valuable and select kind, and all sorts of dyes, so that the world became altered. So, what I would like to do now is show you the same story in Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. And every builder was of one counsel and of one purpose. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they came to a valley in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. And they said one to another, come forth, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, come forth, let us build a city and a tower whose altar top may reach unto heaven. And let us observe the commandment unless we turn aside at any time touching the knowledge that preserved the husbandry. And the angels came down to see the city and the tower 
with the kindred of the patrimony building. And the angel said, consider the builders are one and they follow fully every commandment. And this they begin to do. Come forth, let us go down and thereby confound their commandment that they may not deal wisely enough to keep order. So the angels divided them within from there out, touching the knowledge that unite the husband. And they ceased the work edifying the rays. Therefore, it's the name of it called Babel, because the bait did therein confound the commandment that unite the husband. And from this did the bait divide them within, touching the knowledge that unite the husband. In the glorious Quran, Surah 2, Hayats 101 and 102. And when there come to them a messenger from Yah, confirming that which they possess, a party of those who have received the scripture fling the scripture of Yah behind their backs as if they knew not, and follow that which the devils falsely related against the kingdom of Solomon. Solomon disbelieved not, but the devils disbelieved, teaching mankind magic and that which revealed by the two angels at Babel, Harut and Marut. Nor did they, the two angels, teach it to anyone until they had said, we are only a temptation. Therefore believe, therefore believe not in the guidance of Yah. And from these two angels, the assemblies learned that by which caused the vision between chief and husband. But they injured thereby no one saved by Yah's lead. And they learned that which harmed them and profited them not. And surely they do know that he who trafficked therein will have no happy portion in the hereafter. And surely evil is the price for which they sell their souls, if they but knew. So we see that these angels came down at Babel, both confirmed in Enoch, in Genesis, and in the Quran that they taught magic. But also, these same stewards, these angels were punished for their deeds. And this is also found in the books of Enoch and within the Holy Bible. And I will share some of those. Enoch, chapter 10, verses 11 through 13. All the builders of the patrimony shall not perish in consequence of every secret by which the watchers have destroyed and which they have taught their condemned. All the husband has been corrupted by the effects of the teaching of Asael. To him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. To Gabriel, also Yah commanded, go to the bastards, to the reprobates, to the kindred of fornication, and destroy the kindred of fornication, the condemned of the watchers from among the patrimony. Bring them forth and excite them one against another. Let them perish by mutual slaughter, for length of days shall not be theirs. Exodus Enoch 10, verse 15. To Michael, likewise, Yah said, go and announce his crime to Samyaza and to the others who are with him, who have been associated with husbands, that they fall grievously diseased by reason of all their impurity. And when all the builders shall be slain, when they shall see the perdition of their beloved, confine them to an indefinite dwelling within the infernal, even to the day of judgment, the effect of which will last forever be completed. Enoch 16, 2 and 5. And now the watchers who have sent you to pray for them who in the beginning were in heaven, say, in heaven you have been. Secret oracles, however, have not been manifested to you, yet you have known a reprobate mystery. And this you have related to the husband in the hardness of the mind. And by that mystery have the have, and by that mystery have husband and the person worthy multiplied evils throughout the husband. Now we see that it was these angels who came down and taught men magic. It taught men war, fornication, anything 
that transgressed Yah, that transgressed his commandment, these fallen angels introduced into the husbandry. And this is chronicled in Isaiah chapter 14. And it also gives you the name of this being. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4 through 18, it is written. Now you shall make mention this parable concerning the king of Babylon and decree. How has the proud become feeble? The most fine gold made to rock. A third has brought to naught the carpenters of the patrimony and the correction of the masters. They who played the patrimony with indignation through a continual pestilence. They that subjugated the patrimony through spite have persecuted and none held back. On or anu in all manner fabricated the use of a carpenter's scribing gall and the desire to engrave. The same is condemned to appear both hideous and shaggy, as in Baphomet, he go. Keep that in mind. Even a last made firm emit a streetless sound, and the firm herein faint hearted. At the command of old, you are condemned to hide thyself. None want to be judged concerning us. The world of the dead from beneath is in great commotion by means of you concerning encountering you at thy coming. It stir up itself very suddenly by means of you. All the master builders of the husbandry, they exited once from out of their seats to consult their other attendants. All of them shall murmur and think concerning you. Are you both made desolate and become afflicted as we? Are you become the resemblance of us? Thy arrogance is made humble through prayer and turned aside, seeing thy dishonor. The raised are perverted because of you and utter inconsiderately to conceal you, whispering enchantments. This is what it's talking about. They are whispering a magic spell, uttering a spell to get rid of this being. And I'll also show you that this is practice in Israel today. Or surely are you going to war with heaven, O Lucifer, king of the he -goat. Wherefore have you decided to hide thyself within the husbandry, which did waste away the patrimony? For you have purposed in thy mind, I will break with heaven. I will set up my throne among the princes of the patrimony. I will also, excuse me. I have another part here. I'm sorry, I just have to find it. Right here. I'm sorry about that. I will start again at verse 12. Or surely you are going to war with heaven, O Lucifer, king of the he -goat. Wherefore have you decided to hide thyself within the husbandry, which did waste away the patrimony? For you have purpose in thy mind. I will break with heaven. I will set up my throne among the princes of the patrimony. I will establish myself also perfect pillars out of the same assembly with masons that come from another place. I will set up among the rays such that practice magic. I will be like the most high. Therefore, you shall buy thyself down to bed towards the direction of worship. They that desire you shall observe the commandment because of you and speak against you saying, is this the rebel that weakened the husbandry through rage? that enslaved the solemn assembly to rule, that kept in bondage its inhabitants to render sure desolation and corrupted the masters thereof, that became licentious, seeing the builders one after another his prisoners. Therefore, the sovereigns of the patrimony, as well as the builders of them, slandered the lodge through pride, the high priest together with his accomplished builders. Like I say, I haven't been to the Masonic Lodge or been in any of your solemn assemblies. But if this applies to you, then if you don't believe me, believe what is written. I, I do not know what's going on, but it says right here that this is a practice that's still going on today. And I believe it because it's, it's, it's confirmed throughout the scriptures. 
all the way through Revelation. It's, it is confirmed. But I will continue on. And, and from here, I will start with a little bit concerning Noah now. And this is Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, verse 5, 8 through 14, 16 through, 16 through 18. And it came to pass when the builders began to excel the knowledge of the husbandry and kindred were raised unto them, that the stewards of Yah saw the builders of the patrimony that they were learning. And they took them husbandmen, all of which they chose. And Yah saw that the wickedness of the kindred was great in the husbandry, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his mind was only evil continually. But Noah abided in the knowledge of Yah. This is the history of Noah. Noah was a just chief and upright in his family. And Noah walked with Yah. And Noah begat three builders, his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the husbandry also was pledged with Yah. But the land was filled with the unrighteous. And Yah looked upon the husbandry. And behold, they were pledged. Remember, whom shall he teach doctrine? Whom will he give understanding? Those who do good by reason of being firm. For the, for the precept must be according to the ordinance which is commanded in the law, to open senses of the prior, so that they may hold firm to the pledge they took up and there will remain. I showed you this in, in Genesis chapter 2, and here it is again. All Masons took that oath. See, I didn't, I didn't take an oath, so I can share this with you. And I know that there will be a lot. If they are upright, they will agree with me and they will accept it. And there will be some that will disagree because, I don't know, it may expose them. That's not my problem. But I will continue with in, um, this Genesis chapter 6. And Noah begat three builders, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. And the husbandry also was pledged with Yah, but the land was filled with unrighteousness. And Yah looked upon the husband, and behold, they were pledged. For every person had cast off his course of life because of the husband. And Yah said to Noah, the uprightness of every person is come before me, for the husbandry is fully set against the unrighteous among them. And behold, I will destroy I will destroy them from among the husbandry. Make you an ark, therefore, to house in the carpenters. Chambers shall you build in the ark, and you shall raise up the same within, and outward meet to make supplication. And this is still done in the lodges today. An anointing gall shall you apply to the ark. With a unit of measure shall you leave off, it, leave off it from the top. And the steward of the ark shall you instruct in the service thereof. With Lord, Second and third degrees shall you govern it. Three degrees in masonry, enter an apprentice, fellow craft and masters. Yes, I, I know the, the royal ark and everything, but we, we, we'll keep it according to scriptures, but I won't get into all that. And behold, I, even I do consent to instate a rushing water to grow over the husbandman to stun every person that greatly desired divine inspiration until restored to life after risen up aloft. Again, a rite of passage. And the husband to speak whatsoever there is in the husband shall be worthy of death. And with you I will establish my covenant, and you shall teach within the ark, you and thy builders, and thy husband, and thy builders husband with you. Surah 7, Hayat 59-64. We sent Noah of old unto his assembly, and he declared, O kindred, serve Yah. You have no other sovereign except him. Take heed. I feel, I feel for, your, for you the retribution of an awful day. The teachings of his people said, We see you surely in plain error. He declared, O my chiefs, there is no error in me. But I am a messenger from the sovereign of the world. I convey to you the oracles of my sovereign and give good counsel to you and knowledge of Yah, that which you knew not. Wonder you that there should come to you 
and reminded from your sovereign by means of a chief among you that he may warn you and that you may refrain from evil and that happily you may find mercy. But they denied him. So we saved him and those with him to set at one again the patrimony. And we devoured those who denied our tokens. Now again, this is the oath and the binding once again. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, verse 23. And on the charge by an oath, the enlightened and no wise ceased his service, wherewith he entered into covenant. And he kept the Sabbath on the Sabbath day from all his labor, wherein he had a manner of work. And the person swore, this is now the life which I bind fast, and the kindred where I remain. He shall be ordained a husband, because he was raised up from among the men of low degree. Now this states that an initiate should not even be initiated into the, into the rites of passage unless they had squared themselves first. Meaning, temperance, fortitude, wisdom, and justice. In order to have temperance, that is self-control. You have to have self-control. And how do you gain self-control? By disciplining yourself according to the law. You must learn the law in order to know what it takes to discipline yourself and to know what was right from wrong. That's why in Genesis chapter 2, that initiate had to show himself pure before he was in the husband. And you had teachers that admonished him and watched him because if he wasn't worthy, if he was found to be a hypocrite, he would never make it in. Period. And once they were brought in, they, be they were a teacher. How did they become a teacher and they were initiated? Were just initiated because they knew the doctrine. They applied themselves. And when they were ready, they were initiated. No man should be initiated unless he knows the truth, until he has squared themselves. A person can say all day, yes, I'm standing on my square. What's temperance? It's self-control. Fortitude is the steadfastness of purpose. Wisdom is the law. Wisdom is the law. I mean, this is, and I, and I will prove that, just like the law is the truth, and just like the word is the truth. As a matter of fact, St. John, chapter 17, verse 17, Yahshua said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is the truth. Psalms 119, verse 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. This is the doctrine, Proverbs, chapter 4, 1 through 2. I, I, give you, I give you good doctrine. Forsake you not my law. This is the doctrine of the prophets, the law. It is the only law that we can stand on, and the works must be according to the law. Isaiah, again, Isaiah chapter 28, 9 through 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that greatly desire to do good by reason of being firm, and was drawn from in insolence, pride, arrogance. For the precept must be according to the divine man which was commanded in the law, to open the senses of the friar to live according to the pledge he took up, and therein remain. And Moses spake unto the chief men of the tribes concerning the kindred of Israel, saying, This is the word of Jah. This is the word which Jah have commanded, have commanded. If a husbandman vow a vow unto Yah, or swear an oath to bind his life with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceed out his mouth. Proverbs 1 and 8. My kindred, obey the instruction of thy chief and forsake not the law of thy bond. Proverbs 4, 1 through 2. Obey, you kindred, the instruction of the chief and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake you, not my law. St. John 7. 16 through 17. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that appointed me. If any husband will perform his will, he shall know what the doctrine, whether it be of Yah or whether I speak of myself. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The reverence of Yah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Do the run. Well, I'll just stop right there for right now, but I'll continue right here. This is Genesis, chapter 9, verse 8 through 9, 12 through 14, 16 through 17. And Yah spake to Noah 
and to his sons with him, declaring, and I consider I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So we understand that there was a covenant established with Noah and his seed after him. And y'all said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every good man that is with you for perpetual generations. I do establish my worship against the enchanter, that wizard, that witch, that sorcerer, that astrologer, the enchanter. This is y'all's token that he will remember his covenant because it will be realized where all of this witchcraft has all of a sudden came from. It's been around, but now they promote it. It's in every movie, you see it in commercials, you see it in everything. Well, just guess what? That's exactly what the um, adversary wanted. And it's and it's and it's widespread here in Babylon. Con, con, brother, con. I do establish my worship. Excuse me, bro. Okay. And every good man that is with you for perpetual generations, I do establish my worship against the enchanter. And this shall be for a token of the covenant between me and the husband. And it shall come to pass when I vanquish the enchanter out of the husband, that worship shall be discerned clearly without the enchanter. And worship shall be against the enchanter. And I will turn against the same, that I may avenge the everlasting covenant, everlasting covenant between the patrimony and every good man of all the kindred that is in the husband. And Yah said to Noah, this is an omen of the covenant which I have established between me and with all the kindred that is in the husbandry. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 through 24. And Noah began to beacon the husband, and he is still in, and he is still doctoring surely. And he certainly desolated trouble and was committed to surely. And he had surely instructed his home. And Ham, the father of Can Canaan, regarded the uncleanness of his son and told his two brethren besides, because you need two witnesses, two or three witnesses, whenever you accuse a fellow brother. So Ham seen the uncleanness of his own son, and he went and got two witnesses, which were his brothers. Remember, these brothers were upright. We just read that in Genesis chapter 6. So, so the ideology that, that says that the descendants of Ham or Ham was cursed? No. We have all been, all the tribes, all the patrimony tribes, all the patrimony tribes have been misled with some type of doctrine. So it's not just relegated to Ham or whoever we think it is, because we all have been corrupted at some point and still continue to corrupt ourselves until truth come along. But continuing. And Shem and Japheth seized the transgressor and carried him between both their shoulders and approached the chief which was Noah, and beheld the cunning of their nephew. But their anger was great, and they contemplated not the cunning, their, and they but they contemplated not their father's cunning. But Noah rose up from his banqueting and knew what his younger grandson had done against him. And he declared, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be like to his kindred. Now, from here, I will start in Genesis chapter 10. We will begin now to discuss the history that continued after Noah. Hey, hey, uh, good brother Yisrael. Uh, the brother in the chat said, uh, is that why, I mean, is that why it explains why they said uh, Ham spoke to his brothers? Or so I think that's what the brother trying to uh, ask, ask a question. Uh, yes, okay. I, um, okay. This is what I'm, I'm going to repeat it. So um, I want you to know that it's according to the law, because in the law, it states that, you know, one witness, one witness is not enough to condemn a person. There must be two or three witnesses. All this is showing is how they lived according to the law. And all the narratives and all the narratives of the scriptures are precept to the law. That's why we must study the law and meditate therein day and night. Because as we meditate in the law, we can reflect back to the stories and apply, and apply these laws that we learn to the stories 
or to the narratives that we read throughout the Bible. So they are mentioned all therein, and I would and I would say and I would um share uh would like to share some with you. But I'll repeat this again in Genesis chapter 9, 20 to 20, uh, 20 to 24. And Noah began to beacon the husband, and he instilled doctrine, and he instilled doctrine surely. We know that doctrine was the law. We just, I believe we just um right here, Proverbs 4, 1 through 2. Obey you, kindred, the instruction of the chief, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. St. John 7, 16 through 17. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that appointed me. If any husband would do his will, he will know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yah or whether I speak of myself. We see this reflected in the story of Noah. He is still in he is still doctrine surely. We just read that at his time the husband was wicked, but y'all, but Noah was an upright chief. Upright meaning he lived by the law. He let the law govern his course of life and govern his family. This was the covenant. Y'all promised us the kingdoms of the earth if we only live by his law, which is confirmed in the prophets. So when people try to incorporate an indoctrination with the law, a lot of times it may contradict or a lot of people may twist the law. The thing is, is to confirm the law throughout the scriptures. And that's, and that's what I try to do to, so people can have a better understanding. Excuse me. But again, Genesis chapter 9, and Noah began to, be, to beacon the husband and he instilled doctrine, surely. And he certainly desolated trouble and, and was committed, surely. And he had surely instructed his home. So that means that Noah's family knew the law. And they knew what was acceptable and was forbidden at the law. Because he surely instructed his home. And Ham, the father of Canaan, regarded the uncleanness of his son and told his two brethren besides. And Shem and Japheth seized the transgressor which was Canaan, and carried him between both of their soldiers, shoulders and approached the chief and beheld the cunning of their nephew. But their anger was great, and they contemplated not their father's cunning. But Noah rose up from his banqueting and knew what his younger grandson had done against him. And he declared, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be like to his kindred. So Noah he was brought before Noah and he gave his side of the story. But his nephews seen for themselves. They were witnesses. But Canaan was lying in whatever law that he violate, that he violated in, he was unclean. It made him unclean. And we'll see that later on down the line that the offspring of Canaan were very unchaste and unclean people. But we'll get to that. We'll eventually get to that. Now it says, um, and Canaan begins sighting his firstborn, and Heth, which are the Hittites, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hittite, and the Arbite, and the Sinite, and the Arbidite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamatite. And afterward were these families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as you depart from Gerar, unto Gaza as you travel towards Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboam, even toward Lashon. So we see that Sodom and Gomorrah are among the Canaanite cities, and we know the history of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now it says, and to, this is Genesis chapter 10, 25, and I'm, I'm, I'm reciting these because I'm going somewhere with it. And to Eber were risen up two chiefs. The name was one was Peleg, for in his days the husbandry divided, Moreover, his patrimony's work was cut off. Now, in Genesis chapter 10, we read a little bit about Nimrod. And this is Genesis 10, Genesis, um, 10 verse 8 through 10. And Cush begat Nimrod. And he began to covet the virtuous chiefs of the husbandry. And he greatly desired to play the man that which he took in honey in front of an idol. Wherefore, it is whispered, just like Nimrod, the proudly spoken hunter against Yah. And the first estate of his kingdom was Babel and Erech 
and the cod and Cali in the land of Shinar. Remember, Shinar, this is the place of Babylon. And not only that, listen to what it said about Nimrod. He began to covet the virtuous chiefs of the husbandry. That means that he went hunting for them. He brought allegations against them, used manipulated law, and he hunted them. He hunted for their families, and then he played the man in front of an idol. That means that he captured families, took their sons, and had sex with them in front of an idol. Homosexuality. Let me continue. Ten generations, and this is from this is from the legend of the Jews. Ten generations were from Noah to Abraham to show how great is the clemency of Yah. For all generations scorned his worthy, and Abraham, my forefather, translated and received the reward of them all. By means of the oracles of Abraham, Yah had shown himself long suffering and patient during the lives of these ten generations. And more, the age itself had been selected for the purpose of his merits. His advent had been clearly had had cl his advent had been made clearly to his ancestor Rayu, who predicted the following prophecy at the birth of his son Saru. From this child, the same shall be brought up with the squared nature that shall establish his assembly against the arrogant, and he shall be marked upright and spotless, and shall be an anointed one of the patrimony. An anointed one, y'all, is a messiah. Look up the word anointed in your Hebrew dictionary. It's a Messiah. Contrary to popular belief, there were Messiahs throughout the Bible. But according to um, Christian indoctrination, Yahshua was the only Messiah and he's supposed to be returning and everyone just go off that ideology to justify their beliefs. But I'm going to offer you this one. There were Messiahs throughout the Bible and Abraham was a Messiah. They are called anointed ones of the patrimony. You will usually see the term for this son of God or son of man. But son is word 1,121 in the Hebrew, in the strong Hebrew Aramaic dictionary. And if you have a reliable one, one that is an older one, you will see that one of the words for the word son, what the word son could mean is anointed one. The word man of God can also be translated patrimony. The word God is also word 3,609, and it's from word 1,001, from the primitive root, and it means patrimony. The word son is, the word man is word 1,121, and it is like word number one, which is also Ab or father, and it means patrimony. So whenever you see that term, son of man, the son of God, you know that you are, for the most part, not all the time, but for the most part, you are dealing with the Messiah, an anointed one of the patrimony. So continuing, his advent had been made clearly to his ancestor Renu, who predicted the following prophecy at the birth of his son Teru. From this child, the same shall be brought up with the square of nature that shall establish his assembly against the arrogant, and he shall be marked upright and spotless, and shall be a, the chief of the patrimony, uh, not, and he shall be the anointed one of the patrimony, and his covenant shall not be disannulled, and his seed shall altogether be in authority forever. It was indeed the perfect time that the shepherd of the patrimony should make his appearance in the husbandry. The descendants of Noah were descended by reason of depravity to lower and lower depths of depravity. They were beginning to quarrel and murder, pollute the innocent, build fortified cities and walls and towers, and set a valiant chief over the entire patrimony as king, and wage wars, assemblage against assemblage, and communities against communities. And cities against and, and cities against cities, and put in execution all manner of wickedness, and acquire weapons, and teach warfare to their builders, and they began to also take prisoners and sell them as slaves, and they made for themselves molten images which they worship, each sanctuary the idol which had molten for himself, for the evil chiefs under the chief governor Mastema led them astray with crimes and impurity. For this reason, where you named his son to rule, because all mankind had turned aside to crime and falsehood. When he grew to manhood, the name was perceived to have been chosen fittingly, for he too worshipped idols. And when he himself had a son, Nahor by name, 
He taught him the arts of the astrologers, how to be a soothsayer and practice magic according to the omen of the astrologers. And in time, a son was born to Nahor. Mastema appointed Arabs and, other and others to depart early to the spoil of husband and rob the kindred of their proceeds of their occupation. As soon as they had gathered the fruitful with the humble, and before they could defend against those over the husband, the others returned to put out those that have power over the surface of the land. And the whore named his son Tira, because Arabs and the others returned to acquire the worthy, accused their fruitful, and reduced them to destitution. So what it is saying that during the time of Nimrod, the hunter, he had governors. Now we know that governors in the lodge are the pillar of wisdom because they govern the lodge. They sit as GMHA in the lodge and they govern the lodge. You govern a body of people through laws and these laws are the truth or the law, which is the Holy Bible, which is emblematic of divine truth. What, what do you practice in your profession? It is asked. Brotherly love, relief, and truth. But we see right here that Nimrod, how he oppressed and how he used his builders and his governors to go against the innocent families and rob them of their proceeds, take their families into slavery, and then cast out the fathers, and in some cases, murder them. And it shouldn't be surprising to say that this is mentioned all throughout the scriptures. I just want to um, offer a little bit of um, the law because I see it here, so that means it must have been here for me to um, offer. And then I'll get back into the um, to dialogue. If there be a contention between chiefs and they come before the sovereign and the chiefs that the chiefs may judge them, then they shall justify the lawful and condemn the wicked man. And it shall be, if the wicked man is worthy to be beaten, that the sovereign shall charge him with treachery to be fair and to be given stripes according to his conceit, according to his mischief with a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him and not give more unless he should exceed and beat him over these with more stripes then thy brother should seem worthless to you. Now, these are laws concerning the laws of servitude. Because I believe that these laws are um, being broken. But before I get into that, I would like just to continue more with the story before I get into the laws, because we're talking about Abraham now. <clears throat> it's the birth of Abraham and the life of Abraham I'll get into now. Tira Mary and Tilea, the daughter of Canabo, and the offspring of their union was Abraham. His birth hey, had been read in the stars by Nimrod, for this hey. impudent king was a cunning astrologer. Hey, it was manifest to him that anointed one to be born in his age, who would surely minister against him and triumphantly clarify the untruth of his religion. In his terror at the faith foretold him in the stars, he sent for his princes and governors and asked them to advise him concerning the matter. And they answered him, Our unanimous advice is that you should build a great palace, station the guard at the entrance thereof, and make known throughout the whole of thy realm that all the pregnant women shall settle there together with their midwives, who are to remain with them when they are delivered. With the days of a woman to be fulfilled, and the child is born, it shall be the duty of the midwife to kill it if it be a boy. But if the child be a girl, she shall be kept alive. And the mother shall receive gifts and valuable clothing. And the herald shall proclaim, this is the reward, the woman who bears a daughter. The king was pleased. The king was pleased with this advice. For he had a proclamation published throughout his entire realm, summoning all the architects to build a great palace for him. 60 L's high and 80 L's wide. After it was completed, he issued a second proclamation summoning all, summoning all the pregnant women. They were to remain for their confinement. Officers were appointed to take the women to the palace, and guards were stationed in it and about it to prevent the one, women from escaping there. 
And furthermore, he sent midwives to the palace and commanded them to slay the male children at their mother's breast. But if a woman, but if a woman bore a girl, she was to be clothed in this silk and embroidered garments and led forth the, of, from the palace of detention amid great honors. Jubilees, chapter 12, verse 1 through 5, 12 through 15, 25 through 27. And it came to pass in the sixth week, in the seventh year thereof, that Abraham said to Tigra, his father, saying, Father, and he answered, Behold, here I am, my son. And he said, What help and profit have we from those idols which you do worship, and before which you do prostrate thyself? For there is no intellect in them, for they are speechless forms, and the misleading of the mind. Worship them not. Worship the sovereign of heaven, who causes the rain and the dew to descend upon the earth, and does everything upon the earth, and has created everything by his command, and all life hereby from his knowledge. Why do you worship things that have no spirit in them? For they are the handiwork of men's hands, and upon your shoulders do you bear them. And you have no help from them, but they are a great cause of shame for those who make them, and the misleading of the mind to those who worship them. Worship them not. And in the sixtieth year, in the life of Abraham, that is the fourth week and the fourth year thereof, Abram arose at night and burned the temple of the idols. And he burned all that was in the temple, and no person knew it. And they arose in the night and sought to save their gods from the midst of the, of the fire. And Haran hasted to save them, and the blaze flamed over him, and he was consumed wholly in the fire. And he died in Ur of the Chaldees, as Terah his father. And they buried him in the Ur of the Chaldees. And Terah departed forth Ur from Ur of the Chaldees, he and his sons, to go into the land of Lebanon and to the land of Canaan. And he lodged with the husband of the hill country. And from and Abram and Abram lost with Tira, his father of the hill country, to engrave and to charge with an oath here by the elders. And Yahweh the sovereign commanded, disclose his words and his tablets, that he may consent and teach through his word with the language which has been revealed. For it has ceased from among the mouth of the chiefs of the patrimony from the day of the overthrow of Babel. And now disclose his word and his tablets and his language and began to speak through him in Hebrew, in the language of creation. And he took the books of his forefathers, and these were written in Hebrew. And he transcribed them, and he began from henceforth to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not comprehend. And he studied them during the six rainy months. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 7. Now Yah said unto Abram, Depart you from among thy inheritance and from, and from among thy kindred. And with thy forefathers' tablets unto a husband I will give you. And I will make you an honorable chief. And I will bless you and make thy name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And through you shall all the families of the husbandry be blessed. So Abraham departed as Jah had commanded him. And the company went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of the hill country. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had collected, and the ones that he had instructed in the hill country. And they went forth to enter into the land of Canaan, and into the land of the vanquished they entered. And Abraham speedily passed through the land unto a large of Sikkim among the builders of Mori. And the Canaanites was dead among the husbands. And Yah appeared to Abram and said, To thy seed will I give this country. And there set up he, and there set up he an altar to Yah, who appeared unto him. Abram settled with, this is Genesis chapter 13, 12 through 13. Abram settled with the husband that humbled, humbled, humbled themselves. And Lot settled with the rage of the abased. And pitched his home in Sodom. But the husbandmen of Sodom were wicked and criminals ex exceeded. In Genesis 14, I would just like to give um, an example 
of an incident that happened with Abraham during the time of his life. This is Genesis chapter 14, verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass by consent of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariyah ascended to the throne of Elisar, Chalatimer ascended to the throne of Elam, and a terrible rain desolated the patrimony. Therefore, they made a league to join with Bera, king of Sodom, and Bersha, king of Gomorrah, to change the rule of the land and dispose the reign of prominence and the reign of destruction until it was brought low. Likewise, they were joined together with the builders of the land, which had a city westward. Twelve years they were bonded to Jalotam, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled, and in the fourteenth year failed Jalotam and the kings that were with him, that is, sovereigns, and expanded to leave for Ashtaroth Karnaim, and be conspicuous in the region of Palestine, and feared through behavior, and cave dwell in their proud fear in El Paran, a desert in Arabia which no one could approach to subdue. And they returned and appeared humble wheresoever there was a sanctum and became bondsmen to the district of the Amalekites and also required the others to incline to the degree, to Crete. And they approached the sovereign of Sodom and the sovereign of Gomorrah and consulted likewise the husbandry and took counsel to desolate prominence and the reign of destruction. The same were brought low. And they arranged and they arranged to rule beside them with the builders of the land, without Shalotimer, sovereign of Elam, and without the terrible rain to desolate the patrimony. And Amraphel be made king of Shinar, and Ariyat be made king of Elisar, a quadrant ruled equally with the fifth. And the builders of the land was charged with an oath to desolate trouble. Again, they charged themselves with an oath to desolate trouble, just like Noah charged themselves with an oath to desolate trouble. And the Sodom, the sovereign of Gomorrah, made haste and became committed with them. And they that stood firm were, dis were displayed to the builders. And they selected all the good men of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their builders and introduced their course of life. And they took a pledge to behave the patrimony's chief who dwelt near Sodom and his teachers and to stand upright. And they raised up any man that gazed upon the posterity and spoke of the patrimony passage to the same assembly in an oak grove of Mamre, an Amorite, brother Eshko and brother Abaner. And they were sworn the covenant of the patrimony. And when Abram heard that his kindred had raised up his nobles, he armed his initiated husband, risen up to his consent with the patrimony. 318 and, per and pursued them unto Dan. And he settled himself amongst them and his husband through the dawning of the day and arrested them and took them into a hiding place, which is on an unoccupied border of Damascus. And they guarded them with the, with the band of men and also disannulled the assemblage his kindred had pledged and their deputyship and the husbandmen also and the builders and the, Sodom of, and the, and the sovereign of Sodom went out to meet him concerning his seat by reason of the defeat of Shalotimer and the sovereigns that were with him, which the builders therefore brought about in order that he may be a royal steward, and justified himself to be inducted into royalty until peace was certain to countervail destruction and reproach. And he was the principal officer of the most exalted builder, which was Abraham. And he blessed him and declared, Bless me the patrimony of the Most High Yah, possessing of heaven and earth, possessor of heaven and earth, and bless me the Most High Yah, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy ministry. And he gave him tithes of all. In this case, we see that what that ignobles were raised up in Israel. And Abraham went and arrested all that committed this trespass, and this was according to the law. And now, right here, I will. I will stop right here temporarily and I will just provide laws to the little of the substance that I provided dealing with Nimrod and how we hunted families and what we just saw. Deuteronomy 17 verses 2 through 13. <clears throat> if there be found with you among any of that drone out
or any of the luminaries of the astrologers whatsoever hey, hey, hey. I have hey, not brother. commanded. Hey, brother. And if he told you, yeah, hey, and you have heard tell of it, and expected and diligently, and certainly it is true, and that purpose made known that such a verbal fit is performed in Israel, then you shall bring forth that chief or that husband which have committed that wicked act unto thy place. Even that chief or that husband it shall confine them with masons until they must die. At the word of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the word of one witness he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witnesses shall be pressed upon him to put him to death. And afterwards the hands of the assemblies so you shall put away the evil door from Israel. So you see, anything that Yah has not commanded according to the law, when it is heard, and it comes to the attention of that upright sovereign, of that upright elder, of that upright builder, when it comes to their attention, because understand the wicked, the wicked will not allow this to come to them, because it seems that a lot of the wicked are the ones in places of authority. And I take that just from what the scripture showed me. But I will continue on. Verse 8. If there arise a report too severe for you to judge between the bloodthirsty and the innocent, between sovereign and sovereign, and between ministry and ministry, being reports of controversy within thy cities, then you shall confirm and depart you forth into that place which the, so which, which the sovereign thy chief shall choose. You shall come before the officiating Levites and before the sovereign that shall be in those days and inquire. And they shall provide you the sentence for the verdict. And you shall do according to the law, which they of that lodge, which the sovereign shall choose, shall exile you. And you shall obey the due according to all that they instruct you. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall instruct you, and according to the verdict which they shall adv advise you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside from the sentence which they shall give you to clear thyself with him, nor with the lodge. And the hypocrite that will act proudly and will not listen to the chief ruler that makes supplication to minister according to Yah, thy sovereign, or according to the sentence, even that man shall die, and you shall cast out hereafter the evildoer from Israel, and all the kindred shall be obedient and revered and act no more proudly. Now understand, this ministry or the minister that brings these laws or that comes before that, that comes before these judges, it must be according to the Yah. It must be according to Yah. It can't be according to the Lord Jesus Christ. No. It, not, it cannot be according to God or El, the Canaanite deity. No. It cannot be, it cannot be according to them. It must be according to that sacred name. Yeah. They took it out, I just put it back. That's all I simply do. Because that is the law. Not to take nothing from it or add to it. Well, I know the name of Yah has been taken from it. So I put the Yah, the name Yah back in there, according to the law. So Deuteronomy. 25, 1-3. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start with Deuteronomy 21, 10-14. And this, when you reflect on this, you can see a lot of this and a lot of the narratives that I've just read. <laughs> when you go forth to a hostile encounter against thine enemies, and y'all thy sovereign have surrendered them unto thine forces, and you have taken them prisoners, and regard among the captured a beautiful woman, and have a desire for her, that you would have her for thy wife, then you shall bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head, and dress her fingernails, and she shall destroy the clothing of her captivity from off her, and shall abide in thine house, and mourn her kindred and her father a full month. And after that, you shall withdraw in unto her, and become her husband, and she shall become thy wife. And it shall be, if you find no pleasant thing about her, that you shall let her go wheresoever she will. Moreover, you shall not deal her among the laws for money. You shall not sell her for merchandise. Merchandise for her. You shall, you shall not give her, you shall not give merchandise for her. 
because you have vanquished her. Exodus 21, verse 1 through 6. Now these are the laws which you shall set before them. If you procure a he Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh year he shall depart out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have brought forth him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall depart out by himself. But if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, and he shall bring him on the inside or to the side post, and his master shall piss his ear, do with them all, and he shall serve him as over as an overseer. And if a man deal with his daughter to be a maidservant, he shall she shall not depart out as men servants do. If she please not her master who has engaged her to himself, then she then shall he let her be released. To deal her to another person, he shall have no power. Seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her, meaning that, excuse me, meaning that the laws of servitude, six years you shall serve. After that, you shall go free. You owe no debts. You owe none. If your family is taking this service, especially females, and are taken in as a wife, then they should be treated as a wife. In that case, you have no power to trade her or give her off to nobody. And I have a feeling that that is being done right now. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that's being done. Also, continuing on. Deuteronomy 15, verses 1 through 14. At the end of every seven years, you shall make a remission of death. This is according to the same law that we finished. And this is the ordinance for the remission of death. Every creditor that lend ought to his friend shall discontinue it. He shall not exact it of his friend or of his kindred because it is ordained Yah's release. Of a stranger, you may exact it again. That is a foreigner. But that which is in, that which is in, that which is thine with thy kindred, thine creditor shall discontinue. Except when there shall be no poor among you. For Yah shall abundantly bless you in the husbandry which Yah thy sovereign grant you. For an inheritance to inherit it, to inherit it. Only if you carefully listen to the proclamation of Yah thy sovereign, to observe to perform all these commandments which I have commanded you this day. For Yah thy sovereign bless you, as he promised you, and you shall lend to many people, but you shall not borrow. And you shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. If there be among you a poor person of one of thy kindred, among any of thy drawn out and thy husband, which Yah, which Yah thy sovereign have granted you. You shall not restrain thyself, nor withhold thy service from thy poor brother. But you shall lay open thine services wide according to him, and shall surely lend him enough for his impoverishment. And that which he lacked, digressing here, what do, what do you practice in your profession? Brotherly love, relief, and truth. Because it's according to the law. This Bible is symbolic of truth. It's empl emblematic of divine truth. This is the divine law. This is the word of Yah. And it must be adhered by all lodges and anyone who is associated with the lodges. That is law. And not only that, that is the doctrine of the Masonic lodge, whether they teach it or not. It's there. It's in the, it's in the inquiries and responses of the 33rd degree. I know. I know. I've been there since the age of 30. I know. I know. But where that, beware that there is not a thought in thy wicked mind thinking the seventh year, the year of remission of death is at hand, and thine countenance be become ill favored against thy poor brother, and you lend him nothing. And he cry out to Yah concerning you, and it is an offense by you. You shall surely lend, and thy mind shall not be bitter when you lend to you when, when you lend to him. Because as for this commandment, Yah thy sovereign shall bless you in all thy works, and in all that you purpose thy labor for. For the poor shall never cease from among the husbands. Therefore I command you plainly 
you shall lay open thy service wide unto thy brother, to thy entity, and to thy destitute, and thy husbandry. And if a brother, a Hebrew man, or a Hebrew woman, be surrendered to you and serve you six years, then in the seventh year, you shall let him go free. And when you send him out free from you, you shall not let him depart away empty. You shall furnish him liberally by reason of the by, by reason of thy arrangement, and from thy place, and from thy wine press. Of that way with Yah, thy sovereign, have blessed you, you shall give to them. In the Quran, Surah 2, 79 through 82, 84 through 85. 89, 97 to 100, it is written. Therefore, woe be unto those who describe the scripture according to their ministry and then publish, this is from Yah, that they may acquisition the good purchase therewith. Woe to them for whatsoever their handiwork have prescribed and woe to them for that they earn thereby. For they think the fire of punishment will not touch us without cause because of a certain number of elders. Challenge. Have you received the covenant from Yah? Truly, Yah will not break his covenant or teach you concerning Yah that which you acknowledge not. Nay, but whatsoever have done, but whosoever have done evil and have sin surrounded him, and, and his sin has surrounded him, such are the rightful owners of the fire. They will lodge therein. And those who believe and do good works, such are the rightful owners of the garden. They will lodge therein. And when we made with you a covenant, saying, Said not the blood of your brothers, nor take captives a party of your kindred from among your residences. Then you ratified our covenant, and you were witnesses thereto. Yet you, yet you it is who slay each other and drive out a party of your kindred from their homes, supporting one another against them through sin and treachery. And when they came to you as captives, you would ransom them, whereas their expulsion was itself unlawful for you. Believe you in part of the scripture? And not believe you in, in another part thereof? And what is the retribution of those that execute after more ignominy in the congregation seeing truthfulness? And on the day of resurrection, they will be consigned to the most grievous doom. For Yah is not a, for Yah is not aware of what you put in execution. And when there cometh unto them a scripture from Yah confirming in their possession, though before that they were asking for a signal triumph over those who disbelieved. And when they're coming to them that which they know to be true, they disbelieve therein. The curse of Yah is on the disbelievers. Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, who is an enemy to Gabriel? For it is he who has revealed the scripture to my mind by Yah's lead, confirming that which was real before it, and that God is in glad tidings to believers, who is an enemy of Yah, and his angels, and his messengers, and to Gabriel and Michael. Then lo, Yah himself is an enemy to the disbelievers. Verily, we have revealed unto you clear tokens, and only miscreants will disbelieve in them. It is ever so that when you make a covenant, a party of you set it aside. Most of them believe not. Now, going back into Abraham. Hey, uh, so, so, these, uh, so these fallen angels, so they was back dealing with uh, we know they was dealing back in the Noah age, so they were dealing with Abraham too. Because a good brother wanna they want to know by the, uh, the, by the time the, uh, the fallen angels, the fallen angels, they were condemned to the infernal, but this was before the time of the um Abraham. This was this was during this was during the time of Enoch. But understand by them teaching men witchcraft and incantations. They could always consult with these beings, even in witchcraft today. When witchcraft is used, they set wards, they set, set up all types of wards of protection and whatnot, and they conjure these images up from the infernal. You read about this in the books of Samuel, when Saul went to the witch of Endor, and how he, called, he, he requested for her to call up the spirit of Samuel. So the world of the part of spirits is real. Hell is real. It is real. And I wish that I had my material. I'm really just have drafts that, you know what I'm saying, that I, that, just, that was just put up and I tried to compile some from it. 
but I will. Con um, but if you don't mind, I will continue. And I want to show how a lot of this witchcraft have been introduced into the lodges today and that the origins of it is old. Okay. Go ahead, and um, this is Genesis chapter 17, verse 3 through 9. And Abram altogether sat at one again his knowledge. And y'all talk with him promising. As for me, consider, my covenant is committed to you. And you shall be an anointed one of an honorable patrimony. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. And thy work shall be the patrimony. For, anointed one of the, for an anointed one of the patrimony have I appointed you. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make trials of you. And sovereign shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you. And I see it after you and their families for an everlasting covenant. To be a sovereign unto you and to thy seed after you. And I will grant to you the land wherein you stand out of foreign. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their sovereign. And y'all commanded both concerning the Messiah and the patrimony. You shall protect my covenant therefore. You and thy seed after you and their families. This is my covenant which you shall preserve between me and you and thy seed after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. So we see that the token given to Noah in Noah's time, during Noah's age, when he was an anointed one of the patrimony, when he desolated evil and the enchanter, his sign that Yah's promise would be with his people, there would be the ministry to come against the enchanter, to expose witchcraft in the lodges and among Israel, period. That was the token given to Noah. The token to given to Abraham was one of circumcision. This is how excuse me, this is how you also identify with the seed of Noah. I mean Abraham. And also Ishmael was circumcised with Noah or circumcised with Ishmael on the same day. So yes, the seed of Abraham includes all all of the seed of Abraham and not just Isaac, what the Christianities have imputed in their indoctrination and a lot of people have ran with. Also, in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 17 through 21, 23, I mean. And the sovereign said, Shall I consider, shall I conceal from Abraham that judgment which I execute? seeing that the chief shall surely become an honorable man and virtuous chief, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed through him. For I appointed him so that he would charge his worthy and his family with him, and they shall protect the course of life to execute justice and defend, that y'all may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the sovereign said, because the claim to lie waste Sodom and Gomorrah is increasing, and because their offense is very severe, we will depart down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the claim of it, which was coming to me. And if not, we will know. And the valiant men turned their faces from there and departed towards Sod Sodom. But Abraham made supplication yet for the sovereign. And Abraham drew near and said, Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? So, and as we know from there, the story goes on where, and I had it early. I don't know what I did with it, and I'm sorry if I misplaced it, but um, but um, he went into Sodom and Gomorrah. These weren't two angels. They were two magistrates. And when these two magistrates, these two judges went into the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were brought in by, they were taken in by Lot, who recognized them for who they were. But the chiefs of cities of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to, you know, do what they do. And these magistrates brought their ministry against these sovereigns and these chiefs of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they couldn't do anything. And at this time, I felt they believed that their judgment was imminent. But to continue on now with Abraham and how the laws apply to his life. This is Genesis chapter 22, 
And I have a whole chapter, but I don't have it with me. This is just a rough draft and it's a partial, but it may can explain. It will, it will be used to explain the ministry that I want to bring about Yahshua. Hey, but this is Genesis more, chapter 22. The hey, one, one real quick question, uh, brother, because uh, the uh, brothers have a quick question for you in the chat before you continue on. Uh, brother Don Yehuda uh, says, from your studies, uh, has you found that the Canaanites were cursed with leprosy? And um, the other brother, oh, shit, he dropped out. Let me see can I get him back in real quick. I think he hit the wrong button. I'm just gonna get him back in. Salakia, Salakia. Uh, one second. One second, Israel. Salakia, Salakia. Hey. Oh, my bad, my bad, bro. My bad. Um, okay, that okay, check this out. So, the question was, um, uh, brother Don Yehuda uh, says, he says, uh, from, from his studies, has he found the Canaanites were cursed with leprosy? And the other brother, uh, commenting on, he said, uh, he think, uh, has it happened from um the uh canaanites mixing they see with the fallen angels did they turn white uh the uh canaanites and um, i don't know what he's talking about uh hold on here you go he said i asked he said i asked because i know he was going to go into the canaanites so he wanted to know from your studies have you found the canaanites were cursed with leprosy and of uh, course what, bro, uh was it from the fallen angels they were cursed with leprosy, but it wasn't from the fallen angels. It wasn't from the fallen angels. You know, it's people cursed with leprosy today, which is, you know what I'm saying, the skin pigmentation. And I, and I actually, to be truthfully honest with you, I, I brought, I got a piece of that with me. I just have to find it, find it, and I can expound on it. Because I have, I have stuff scrolled everywhere, man. Like I told you, I just uh, try to find a lot of the things. And I could be later on in the room. I think he's trying to figure out who who all who all the fallen angels uh could mix their seed in with. Well, I don't I don't I don't think I don't think that the fallen angels mix their seed with anyone. When okay. it said they mingled what they did when the, when they came to earth. Remember at the beginning when I was talking about the angels, how they can when they come to earth, they can appear, they take the form of wind. Of mankind. Well, this is how they appear earlier in our history. They appeared as men. They could be seen to eat or to talk or anything with men, but they appeared to them and they began to teaching them these forbidden arts. And what happened was the people who they taught, they became like sorcerer kings or what they call tyrants, giants. They hunted families and there were a lot of them. You know, that's why even in ancient Egypt or ancient civilizations, you had cults for different deities because at one point, these deities appeared to mankind and people chose what deities they wanted to worship. And they fastened idols for this image of man that this angel appeared to them. So this is where idol worship, you know what I'm saying, originally came from because these people who they took and they taught these crafts, you know what I'm saying? These people began to worship them as deities. They began to worship them as deities. But um, as far as the Canaanites and leprosy, man, I know that I have it. I have it near because I was I was looking for it earlier. As a matter of fact, bro. Um, and and I and I'll discuss that. I can discuss that briefly because I usually have all of my stuff together. And I found a piece of some of my rough drafts where I got everything together. And I should have a little part in here dealing with leprosy if I can find it. And, um, man. Uh, if you can't, yeah. just go and continue with your, uh, you know what I'm saying, presentation. And, uh, you know, who might have get to it, you know, on another show or something. But yeah, you know, so, uh, these celestial beings that you were talking about, you can go ahead along with your uh, presentation. Okay. Um, 
first and foremost, I want let me recite this before I get on with the presentation because I want people to identify with, you know, the lodges. And like I told you, throughout the scriptures, it's mentioned a lot about the lodges and everything, man, and all. Um, you know what's going on. And I and I start with this. Let me start with this scripture right here. This is in scripture, St. Matthew 21. Verses 42 to 46. Yahshua said to them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the Mason, which the builders rejected? The same has become the chief man to desolate the empire. He is Yah's benefactor, and he is set apart concerning our knowledge. Therefore, I say to you, the rule of the patrimony shall be taken from you and given to the kids of bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall come against his Mason shall be destroyed, but against whomsoever he shall come. He said, grind him the power. And when the chief and the Pharisees heard this parable, they deserved that he spake of them. But when they sought to purpose themselves against him, they feared the husband, because they considered him as a prophet. Now, now, the thing I want to do before I get into, you know, like the Canaanites and whatnot, because like I say, I have it around somewhere, but the elements are here. And, um, for example, you can find it here in St. Mark 7, 6 through 9. And he answered and said to them, Well, have prophesied, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. These chiefs honor me through their speech, but their mind is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines, doctrines to worship Grecians. For the laying side of the law, y'all, you hold the tradition of the Grecians. As the Sarah, as the ceremonial ablution of pots and cups, and many other things like things you do. And he said to them, Who are well, you reject the law of Yah that you may keep the traditionary law? Now, when, um, when according to the law, leprosy is an unclean where the person who is found with it, they are disinherited. So when Cain was cursed, his, he was already. Disinherited. The time just had to come forth when the disin disinheritance can become official. And this time actually happened when the Israel came out of Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, we find in the scriptures that it was then that there were six tribes of Canaan that were actually cursed with leprosy. And um and um, when they were cursed with leprosy, this gave Israel, you know, justification according to the law to run them out of the land. And so that is basically what happened. And um, I'm still looking right now for it. I'm, I'm coming across everything that I need to um, show. But that, but um, I know I got it here. Um. Yeah. You know what, bro? I'm going to be honest with you. I left it in the room because I'm thinking that all that I was, was going to need was just, you know what I'm saying, what I wanted to present. But, I mean, if you, um, what I could do. Hey, your sound had changed a little bit. You sound a little bit like, uh, I don't know. Like How about now? Same. All right, yeah, yeah, you sound better now. Sound all right, now. all right. So, um, yeah, man, but you know, uh, you was just about to get into, um, I think it was Abraham. Uh, I think he was tying me into the uh, fallen angels or the Anunnaki, the Watchers, same thing. So, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and continue. All right. You have a question? Okay. I mean, if um, if, if some brothers, I tell you what, if some brothers have some questions. I'd be glad to expound on it, but you know, I also want to expound on that um about Cain and the leprosy because, like I told you, I have um I have substantial I have substantial um enlightenment on that. You know, it's just in the room, and I only brought just so much out to the table that I was going to expound on, and I was hoping that I brought it with me, and okay. um, but evidently, evidently. Hey, if any of you brothers and sisters out there have any questions y'all want to ask, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Upon this topic, 
you can uh, hit the stream yard link and come on and ask them personally, or you can type your question uh, in the chat and uh, come on, you know, y'all could get, you know, so this is for open platform, new series um, for controversial and deep biblical breakdowns. And the brother has, uh, as we see, he has so much material um, and uh, he has years and years of studying. This brother has been studying. Uh, he has been awakening and studying uh, for about 21 years now, uh, nonstop, day and night. So uh, he's ready to share this material. And that's what I want on this controversial and deep biblical breakdown series. I want the top scholars of the Hebrew Israelite community to come on and uh, please your case. Um, I would like all the brothers and sisters, I mean, all the brothers and sisters that teach uh, the um, lunar moon Sabbath. Hey, I'd like to have somebody come on and explain that. If you're into the full moon is the new moon, uh, uh, come on and explain that. Uh, as long as no foolishness, you know, no pedophilia, uh, you know, pedophile stuff and no kind of homosexual stuff. Uh, as long as it's court to law and you can bring it out uh, biblically, historically, and uh, archaeologically, uh, you can come on this platform. It's open um, and it's for Israel to have a great discussion. Um, upon um, upon these things, we can't keep with the same mm -hmm. we learned from um, our old elders. Um, you know, because as we know, um, this is the day uh, of the uh, age of information. So we must get this out, edify our people, and let Israel see. You know, uh, is these controversial and deep? Biblical doctors and breakdowns, is they true, is they false? It's for all of us to figure out. So the brother uh Yisrael, uh Bernard Jensen, he will be doing a, a lot of classes on here. And uh, he has a lot of stuff. Like I say, he's been doing a lot of studying for years. So uh okay, brother, I'm back. Y'all welcome to come on and uh, you know, ask some questions or whatever. So go ahead, my brother. Okay, this is uh, for the brother who wanted to dip, who was talking about the Canaanites and leprosy, right? I came across a page, and I would just, um, I will recite the scriptures dealing with leprosy, and um, and from it, you know what I'm saying, we can find and get some type of idea of what's happening. So first I'll start in Leviticus 13, 45-46. And the leper in whom the plague is, his treachery shall be without doubt. And his headship diminished. I mean, his headship dismissed. And he shall put a covering upon his parlor window and shall cry, unclean, unclean, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Outside the encampment shall his habitation be. Now, I want to show where this is um, shown. Um, Exodus was um, about lepers. It's Exodus 23 verses 23 through 24 and verse 28. And it's other passages in the Bible you can find the two such as Joshua and later on in Deuteronomy. But it says, for my messenger shall depart before you and bring you in against the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. These were the tribes mentioned in Genesis chapter 23. For my messenger shall depart before you and bring you in against the Canaanites, which are, and all of these are Canaanite tribes, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their manners, but you shall utterly overthrow them and fully break down their images. And I will send the scourge of leprosy before you, which shall disinherit this fort, the Canaanite, the Hivite, and the Hittite from before you. Also, showing you what leprosy is. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian husbandman whom he had raised up. For he had raised up an Ethiopian husband, an Ethiopian, an Ethiopian husband. And they said, has John indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And Yah heard. It. And the anger of Yah was kindled against them, and they departed. And the cloud departed from off the temple. And behold, 
Miriam was leprous, white as snow. And, the, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. In another case, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 25 through 27, this is dealing with Elijah and his servant Gehazi, his husband. And he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said to him, which way departed you, Gehazi? And he said, Thy husband went, my, thy husband went nowhere. And he said to him, Departed not my man after you, when the steward turned again from his chariot to meet you? Is it required to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave to you. And to thy seed forever. And he departed out from his presence, a leper, as white as snow. Second Chronicles 26, verse 21. And Uzziah, the king, was a leper until the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the families of Yah. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the chiefs of the husbandry. So what you see is that this leprosy is the lack of skin pigmentation. And um, it is considered a person with this unclean. Now, there are ceremonial ablutions or purification method, methods that one can use to, you know, to either stop leprosy or purify. But I believe it must be done according to the law. But what it was was when, Cain, when Canaan was cursed and that lot fell on his sons that wasn't in land they were supposed to inherit it and the scourge of leprosy was brought upon them by Yah, this skin disease and because of this skin disease they were disinherited according to the law and this gave Israel justification in the law to go into this land and drive them out because now they were unclean in holy land. And nothing unclean can be in the holy land or the land will remain defiled. A, a land once flowing with what? Milk and honey? How the scriptures describe it? Or how people interpret it? And this is what you have. So, so you know, I'm not saying that Caucasian people are cursed because there are upright there are upright people amongst the Gentiles and the Bible speaks of upright upright lepers amongst the people because in the illustration that we just used with Elisha and Gehazi excuse me Naaman the Syrian Naaman the Syrian was a leper but he was held in high exaltation by the chief man over him. So yes, you know what I'm saying? That's instances in the Bible where even Yahshua helped a Canaanite woman in the Gospels when she came to him because of her daughter. I believe in one book, it tells you that it just mentioned that there was a Canaanite woman. But in another book of the Gospel, it mentions her nationality as a Syrophoenician. She was a, she was a Greek, but she was a Syrophoenician by nation. That means she was a Greek woman living in an area of Israel. She was a white living amongst blacks. And Yahshua heard um, um, um help. And also in the um in the book of the gospels, as a matter of fact, Yahshua's charge to his disciples, to his teachers, were to awaken the foolish, cast out incidents. And purge out, uh, purge out the lepers. Raise the dead is translated awaken the foolish. The word devils is insolence. Cast out insolence. He was supposed he sent his disciples to awaken the foolish. Cast out insolence. Purge out and, 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 and purge out the lepers. That's why when he went into the temple, that was one of the things he did when when they say he over um over overthrew overthrew the tables of the money changers. Well. 
that was that was translated as he threw out the the, the pale money lenders. You had you had Canaanite or lepers who were acting as treasurers in the temple. And if they were treasurers in the te um, temple, I know they had them as treasurers in the lodge also. Because the lodge is nothing more than a reflection of the temple. Now, um, I wanted, I really wanted to go into Yahshua, but what I want to do is I want to recite Genesis chapter 49 for the most part. And this is to give you an idea or a clue concerning the um, masonry and how it's closely inter interacting with Israel because that Genesis chapter 49 is actually an oracle and it shows you how to identify with the tribes and with the lodges of the certain tribes because every son of Israel had their own lodge and they had a mark distinction, a mark of distinction so that you could distinguish their lodges. And this is Genesis chapter 49. And Yaqub proclaimed an assembly among his sons and commanded, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which may that which shall befall you in the future time. Consecrate yourselves at once and be obedient, you builders of Yaqub, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my chief, and the overseer of my builders, the honorable man to desolate the proud and raise up likewise the worthy. Concerning those being filled with drink abundantly, you shall not excel. On account you enter in unto the patrimony's laws therein defiles you with. They are condemned to suffer because of my laws. Pointed, what he's talking about is being drunk going into the laws. It is against the law to imbibe wine before or why or, or while you are in the laws. It is unlawful to be under the influence of that in the laws. Verse 5, Simeon and Levi are chiefs. That which pertaineth of, of the unrighteous are in their lodges. Simeon and Levi, these are the lodges, the tribe of Simeon and Levi in their lodges. O my nobles, worship not you with their necromancers. Concerning that solemn assembly, my nobles, be you not enjoined. For in their indignation they profane the word, and in their self-will, they made a perverted mason. Cursed be their mind, for it is impudent, and their zeal, for it is violent. I will disannul them with a supplanter and remove them from having power as a prince. Now, digressing there for a moment. Well, you see, we know that the Levi was given the priesthood as an everlasting ordinance and as a covenant. We know this in Genesis, I mean, not Genesis, but in, um, in the book of Numbers. Numbers eight, if I'm not mistaken, numbers eight, one through eighteen. But um, I will check to be to make sure because I have it. But it says that in the lodges of Levi, you have necromancers. Anything that pertains to the unrighteous can be found in the lodges of Levi and Simeon. It said their solemn assemblies they per, they they prefer they pervert their masons. And you know what? I found throughout the scriptures. That Levi, as a rite of passage of their lodges, they do just like Nimrod. They have sex with their initiates. Now, I don't know if it's true, but the scripture says it's true. Well, it says that it was committed in the lodges of Levi throughout the scripture. So we'll see. Verse 8. Judah, you are he whom thy kindred shall revere. Thy ministry shall be for the redeemed of thine builders. Thy patrimony's kindred shall bow down before you. Judah is committed to purge the assembly. From, from a month of advance, my son, you are exalted up. He subdued the pervert. He prostrated himself to make atonement. And he overthrew violence. Who shall arise up against him hereafter? Correction shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from among his chief men, until the Messiah appear. And to him shall be the gathering together of the patrimony be accomplished, binding his kindred to abstain from impurity, and his chieftain's builders to examine the erect, 
He cast out their transgressors out of the inheritance and their treacherous men from the innocent that bear fruit. His knowledge shall be brilliant in conjunction with banqueting and his word per among the steadfast. So we see that when it talks about Judah, it talks about being upright. It's talking about a tribe that's going to stand for justice. It's talking about a tribe that will hunt the unrighteous and desolate them. We will not allow wickedness to destroy what y'all have given us. And how do we do that? We do it through our ministry. That's why Judah prevailed over his brother. His ministry prevailed over the ministry of his brothers because he had a correction in his ministry that say, if you violate the, if you violate the law of y'all, these are the judgments and the punishments that you will face, regardless of who you are. The Levites, on the other hand, were given the priesthood. But to continue on, chapter verse 13, Zebulun shall stand firm with the virtuous herein by all means. And he shall be among the honest that command. And his work shall be both to teach truth and to catch men. Issachar is an isolated scribe sitting down to instruct the carpenter population. And he perceived that the lodge greatly desired good tidings and the husbandry that it was agreeable. And he offered his help to the builders and became committed to serve with faithfulness. Dan shall rule his builders as to desolate the kitchen of Israel. Dan shall be an enchanter among the travelers, an adder in the pathway that oppressed the horsemen to stay, so that his rider shall be condemned afterwards. We prefer to be circumspect by means of thy salvation, O Yah. God, life shall discomfort him, but he shall, dis but he shall overcome with the remedy. Out of Asher, his builders shall be rich, and they shall gather together to take counsel to covet. Naphtali is a chief thoroughly prepared. He lay out to charge the great commandment. And that is Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 13, and St. Matthew 22, 36 through 38, which is to love y'all with all your mind, your understanding, and your will, and to keep his commandments. That is the great commandment. Joseph is a fruitful builder. The righteous seed afflicted in prison, whose work travel among the sons. The master carpenters that are discontent that are discontented vexed him and rose up against him and hated him. But his strength endured among the unrighteous. And his and the strength of his patrimony is established to continue by the ordinance of the noble patrimony of Yakub. From then shall be the shepherd the builder that have power as a prince. The just among the builders of thy patrimony who shall help you. And by the almighty who shall bless you with the blessings of the heaven above. Blessings of the exceeding deep thing that the Lord hide. Blessings herein to prophesy and hereby have compassion. The blessings of thy patrimony have dominion over the nobles and the blessings of the progenitors according to the infinite order of an ancient promotion. They shall be committed to the chief man of Joseph and on the diadem of the head of him that was excluded from his kindred. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Among the enlightened he shall accuse the robber, but in obscurity he shall surely exercise robbery. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And, and this is and this that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. So it tells you how to identify with these lodges. It shows you that of all of these, there was lodges that stand out, and that's Joseph. You see, the lodge of Joseph is prison. We are not, we are not on a register of any lodge. The prison is the lodge of Joseph. It is in there that Yah have created the greatest minds and brought them out of prisons to rule. Just like Abraham, because just Abraham bred in prison. And I have and I have the scriptures on it. I just don't have it with me. But Abraham, David, um, um, Joseph, so many um Daniel, so many great messiahs, this is what it this is where they come from. They come from the prison. That's why in in verse chapter in the verse where the scriptures refer to Judah. It said that Judah will rule until the Messiah appeared. Notice again, Judah, you are he whom thy kindred revere. Thy ministry shall be for the redeemed of thine builders. 
that patrimony is kindred shall bow down before you. Judah is committed to curse the assembly. From a month in advance, my son, you are exalted up. He subdued the pervert. He prostrated to make atonement, and he overthrew violence. Who shall rise against him hereafter? Correction shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from his chief men until the Messiah appear. See, the thing is, a Messiah can come from any tribe. Just like you can be from any tribe and join the, the lodge of Israel you want. You could be from the tribe of Gen uh, Benjamin and lodge with Judah. You could be from Naphtali. And you can lodge with Issachar. The thing is, these are marks of distinction. What you see or what you discern in the heart of that brother or in the mind of that brother or in the action of that brother would determine what lodge is in. Because you shall know a carpenter by the, by the fruit he put forth. That carpenter builder or his husband, his craftsman, his initiates should be a reflection of him. If his reflection of him it's not one of virtue. It's not one of righteousness. If not, if it's not of something of standing square, if it's not studying the law and being able to go through the scriptures and point out the laws in the narrative, then something is wrong. Because the law is our foundation. It is the foundation of the pillar of wisdom, and he governs the lodge. When the lodge is being lectured, there are two pillars. There are two pillars that speak. These are teachers, and it and it shows you that it's the teachers for the most part, either out of ignorance or out of the hardness of their own minds, have corrupted the teachings. And um, all throughout the scriptures, you will see this event reoccurring over and over. And um, for example, this is going back to Abraham, because I want to I wanna reflect on this a little bit, because we know that in the law that, you know what I'm saying, the human sacrifices is hedonism, paganism. And I know a lot of people may have questions concerning that because in Genesis chapter 2, the so-called has translated, Abraham was going to trans uh, was going to sacrifice his son, which was totally against the law. And I have just a little portion of that, and I'm and I'm expound on it a little bit, a little bit if you don't mind. And, okay, um, brother. And um, okay, it brother. Says, um, this is Genesis chapter 22, 1 through 2, verses 12 and 14. And, it, and I'm going to show you the reflection of the law in the ministry of Abraham. And it came to pass after these things that God did try Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he answered, Behold, here I am. And he commanded, Take not thy son, thine just builder, Isaac, whom you love, and depart you for the land of Moriah, and appoint him there to offer incense and sacrifice in the sanctuary of the rays that I will show you of. Digressing. If Isaac is learning to burn incense and sacrifice, that is that is an ordinance of the priest. At this time, it wasn't, it wasn't covenant to the Levitical priesthood. But every firstborn male, you know, uh, uh, every firstborn male or whatnot, or, uh, or a person that advanced was appointed to this position. And we know that in the lodge, it is the worshipful master that handles the holy things in the lodge. Just like it's the priest that handles the holy vessels in the temple. Well, Abraham was appointing his son to burn, to offer incense and sacrifice in the sanctuary. At this time, we didn't have a temple, but you had sanctuaries, the sanctuary of the lodges. Remember the case where Joshua, when they were crossing Jordan, and God told him, take 12 stones. And set them up here. And set up 12 stones when you cross the other side of the river. And anoint them. Well, you know, the word stones in Hebrew means builders. And it's 12, it's 12 master masons that make up a lodge. What he was doing, he was establishing a lodge. With a master builder out of each tribe of Israel. And he took those stones and he set them up. And he appointed them. And he appointed them uh, for that lodge. But this is what Abraham was doing. Continuing, and he commanded, Take now thy son, thy just son, build the Isaac, whom you love, and depart you for the land of Moriah, and appoint him there to offer incense and sacrifice in the sanctuary of the rays that I will show you of. And he commanded, Pour from thine anointed all upon the young man, 
Likewise do you the husband appointed unto him. For this place I distinguish in order that you reverence Yah, because you have not withheld thine son, thine just builder from me. And a Abraham called the name of that place Yah Yari, as it is said to this day, on the mount of Yah it shall be provided. This same place in which this event took was the location of the altar of the temple of Yah. And in First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 18, verse 28, then the messenger of Yah commanded God to say to David that David should go forth and set up an altar to Yah at the threshing floor of Arnon, the Jebusite. At the time when David saw that Yah had answered him at the threshing floor of Arnon, the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. First Chronicles 1, first, first Chronicles 22, 1 through 2. And six. Then David, then David determined, this shall be the temple of Yah the sovereign, and this is the sacrificial altar for the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the servant-born foreigners that were in the land of Israel, and he appointed masons and gathered dressed stones to build the temple of Yah. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build the temple of Yah the sovereign of Israel. Second Chronicles three and one. Then Solomon began to build the temple of Yah at Jerusalem upon Mount Moriah, where Yah appeared to David, his father, in the place that David appeared at the threshing floor of Arnon the Jebusite. Now understand, at Mount Moriah, this is, this is Genesis chapter 2, where Abraham assigned his son Isaac, and he commanded, Take now thy son, thy just builder Isaac, thy just builder Isaac, whom you love, and depart you for the land of Moriah, and appoint him there to offer incense and sacrifice in the sanctuary of the rays that I will show you of. So we see that in this instance. Okay. That, uh, okay, brother, we have about uh, right up on the 13 minutes left. Uh, what I want you to do. Uh, Finish telling what you're about to tell them right now. And uh, I want you to basically, uh, basically what I want you to do is just end off uh, explaining to them what you want them to get out of knowing about the fallen angels, a.k.a. the Watchers, a.k.a. the Anunnaki, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, uh, who they were and what's their mission uh, and are they still here. Everything you want them to know, you know what I'm saying, basically in other, you know, uh, 12 minutes now. Okay, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because actually, you know, I can I can provide a little bit more than that on that, and it's something right here in front, front of me, like I mentioned, on in the Anunnaki. And this is real briefly. I would just try. I'll, I'll try to re relate that real fast here. This is just like a very old rough draft, but. From what that I've uh, from what I've already attempted to explain, dealing with the fallen angels and how they was cursed and how it is described on, or you know that the biblical rendering of Anu, that he was cursed to appear both hideous and shaggy. He is called the king of the ego. He is called Lucifer. He taught the princess magic. These are this is what was reflected throughout the beginnings of the story that I was telling you and what I wanted to show you, and that yes, these beings are real. Are they in the celestial chariots? No. Understand that those are people, very honorable men, that travels on those cherubim or those celestial chariots. And you can find it through all out the Bible. As a matter of fact, the, the, the sovereign at the time of Moses on Mount Sinai, this is what the, the Lord, as the translators, deceived or misled so many people into thinking. That word is also translated to sovereign. And this chief sovereign of the patrimony was on his celestial terry. And in the, during the day, it appeared as a big cloud and as a pillar of, and as a pillar of fire by night. And, and you know, not to, I've seen him. I, I, I've seen him twice, as a matter of fact. And I've actually seen, seen the fire. I've seen one actually ascend and take off. And at the time, I didn't know what I was actually seeing. All I thought I see, was seeing was a UFO. And this was over 20 years ago before I even was incarcerated. But dealing with Anu or who these Anunnaki's are and their 
and how they relate to these beings of the Bible, I'll just complete this. And this was just a brief little something I had put together probably a few years ago that I probably forgot about. And it was a rough draft. And this is talking about the religion of Babylon and how it reflects to these beings, these fallen angels. And it says in the Holy Bible, World Bible Publishers, Incorporated, Our Falls Hour, in its glossary states, Babylon, religion. The religion of Babylon involved many gods. Originally, their chief gods were Anu, god of the heavens, Enlil, god of the upper air, and Ea, god of the watery deeps. No god of theirs had any moral quality or asked for ethical behavior by their followers. In relation between the Bab and the relation between Babylonians and the Chaldeans in the Holy Bible, World Bible Publishers Incorporated, Our Falls Hour, in its glossary states, Chaldeans, Nebuchadnezzar, was the first of the so-called Chal Chaldean dynasty, and Babylonian. Babylonians begin to be called Chaldeans which is the word used to describe the army of the great conqueror, Nebuchadnezzar, son of Nebuchadnezzar. In the book, The Wars of Gods and Men by Zechariah Sitchin, page 38 states, it was believed by the Egyptians that Ra too had come to earth from the planet of a million years. In a celestial barge, the conical upper part of which, called Ben Ben, or Pyramidian Bird, which was later preserved in a specifically built shrine in the sacred city Anu, the biblical on, which is better known by its Greek name, Heliopolis. On is word 204 in the New Strong's Complete Dictionary of Bible Words by Dr. James Strong, copyright 1996. It states, On, of Hebrew, the der river. On, a city of ancient Egypt. On, and we know that a lot of cities were named after their deities or given the name of their deities. And On, or the city of On, or the city of Anu in Egypt, was indeed one of those cities. And you may hear the word on or the name on in many compound names such as amun Ra, or Babylon, the confusion of on, or Babel, the confusion of God, because El is word 410 and means God. So th these are things to take into consideration. And also a scriptural evidence in Genesis 41, verse 45 and verse 50, it is written, and Pharaoh called Yaseph's names Zephna, Panai. And he gave him to wife Asena, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Yahshua went over, I mean, and Yahself went over all the land of Egypt. And so Yahself was born two sons before the years of the famine came, which is Asena, which Asena, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare to him. So we know that On is used in the scripture, as we seen earlier in the book of Isaiah. Where it mentioned on as the ego. And it is, it is, here it is, right here. And this is Isaiah 14, 4 through 7, 12 through 13. Now you shall take up this parable concerning the king of Babylon and decree. How has the proud become feeble, the most fine gold made to rock, on in all manner, on in all manner, fabricated the use of a carpet describing all in the desire to engrave. The same is condemned to appear both hideous and shabby. But surely you are going to war with heaven, O Lucifer, king of the ego. Therefore, you have decided to hide thyself within the husband, which is waste away the patrimony. For you have purpose in thy mind. I will break with heaven. I will set up my throne among the princes of the patrimony. I will establish perfect pillars out of the same assembly with Mason that come from another place. Enoch 10 and 15. To Michael, likewise, y'all said, go announce the crime to Samuel and to the others who are with him and who have established and who have associated with husbands that they utterly be become diseased by reason of all their impurity. And when all their builders shall be slain, when they shall see the perdition of their beloved, confine them to an indefinite dwelling within the infernal, even to the day of judgment, the effect of which shall last forever become complete. Revelation 9 and 3, I mean, Revelation 9, 1, 2, 3, and the fifth chief struck. And I saw a prince cast out from among the race of the husband. And to him was purpose to let go free the desolate that walked the abyss. And, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the abyss, and as the smoke of a great furnace. And the heat and an inanimate breeze were intermixed by reason of the smoke of the abyss. And there came forth, and there came out of the, out of the smoke many gods belonging to the world of departed spirits. And over them was the hairy deity, which is the scourge of the husbandman 
Mark, if, <laughs> Revelation 17 and 3. Therefore, he led me forth into the spirit before the desolate. And I had a vision of a certain man bowed down to a scarlet colored creature, full of the knowledge which blasphemy that adjured the chief men and accumulated power. In the book, The Wars of God and Men by Zechariah Sisher, page 195, states, while one group of priests began to chant the hymn, Kakab Anu at Telu Shamani, the planet of Anu rises in the skies, a priest went up to, to a priest went up to the topmost stage of the tower of the temple to watch the skies for the appearing of the planet of Nibiru. Page 77 states, this orbit they wrote takes the planet to a station in the distant heavens, then brings it back to the Earth's vicinity, crossing between Mars and Jupiter. And it was in that position as depicted in a 45-year-old Sumerian drawing that the planet obtained its name Nibiru, crossing and its symbol, the cross. And the Young's Compact Complete the Comeback Bible Dictionary, copyright 1993 by the International Bible Society, page 83 states, Babylon, Babylonia, the history of Babylon and Mesopotamia connected with the kingdom of Hamite Nimrod three generations after the flood. During the third millennium BC, the center of Mesopotamia power shifted south, first to various Sumerian city states, Bilu Kashanar, for two centuries, probably 20, 2400. And this is the last piece of information that I just want to share with you. In the New Strong Complete Dictionary of Bible Words, in the Greek Dictionary, mind you, word 5,516 states, Chi Sigma Sigma, the 22nd, 14th, and an absolute letter, number 4,742 as a cross. In the Greek Dictionary, word 4,742 as a cross of the Greek alphabet, intermediate between the 5th and the 6th. Use these numbers denoting respectively 660 and 6. 666 as a numeral. 600, 3 score, and 6. That word 470, that word 4742 as the cross states from a, from a primary to stick, that is prick, a mark, incised, or punch for recognition of ownership, a scar of service, a mark. So this cross, which has a which has a numerical denotation of 666 is also a mark or a scar service. So those who believe that the cross, and I don't care what kind of form it's in, it could be a ump, it could be a cross, it could be the Masonic cross. I don't care what kind of cross. A cross is a cross is a cross. And it, and it, and it denotes respectively, numerically, three, 600, three score, and six. So a lot of people are already the mark are under the mark of the beast. And this beast was this Hego, Anu, or On, who was cursed to look hideous and shaggy and who is worshipped, as the scripture says, even today, in the largest of Israel. And at that, I would just, I would like to stop from now. And, um, and if anyone have questions, they could post them to you and I'll be glad to address them at, a, at the right time. Con, con, con. The brother brought forth some good edification. Once again, this is called the controversial, controversial and deep biblical breakdowns series. Uh, today, uh series was uh called Fallen Angels, The Watchers, and Anunnaki, presented by Brother Israel. And uh, he will be back doing another show in a couple of days. Um, I think he's going to do um, um, Yeshua, a.k.a. Yahweh Shai. Was he from the tribe of Judah or Levi? He's going to expound on that in a couple of days. And he also get he's also going to uh, get deeper into uh, the uh, masonry. Um, using the um, the things that we call UFOs out here. So stay tuned for the brother. He's going to have that for you probably Tuesday or Wednesday um, afternoon or night. Um, just stay tuned and look for the um, premiere. Hit that notification button. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share to your family and friends. And good brother, um, I appreciate you. I've been doing this brother for a long time before he did no all this. We're from the same city, Waycross, Georgia. Shouts out to Waycross, Georgia. Now one shout out, and uh, you know, shouts man, out to Dallas, know. Texas, man. Shouts out right. to Dallas, Texas, man. Shout out to Dallas, South Texas. Side, for sure. 
you yes. know, uh, all my people and, there, man. Love y'all. And it's funny how the most high brings all this individual because we didn't know we was Israelites then, but now we know and look at us now. And look at us now. People. All right, shalom, brothers and sisters. Till next time. Shalom, bro. And we'll talk it up deep.